I may have never met anyone with that name, that don't mean that you don't know many with that character. Because you cannot have his name and possess his character. Here is a person who is much like a spy in war. You send them in and when they get there, they look like they're on your team. They look like they're a part of your crew. They look like they share your values. They share um, your commitment. They look like they're in your circle. That is until they're not. And once they're not, you recognize their intentions all along. Judas is one of those disciples who's kind of a spy of the faith. Here he is in Matthew 26, 14, and it says he went to the chief priests and he said, what are you willing to give me to betray Jesus? They weighed out 30 pieces of silver to him and he began looking for a good opportunity to get it done. But the first word in Matthew 26, verse 14 in my NASB says then. Then means something happened before then. It's like seeing a therefore in scripture. My dad would always say, if you see a therefore, you need to go back up and read what it's there for so that you know why the therefore, what it's there for. <laughs> and so if you keep reading from the then, you won't really know what tipped Judas off to decide, you know what, I'm done with this. And right before you get to this story in Matthew 26, 14, when Judas went to the chief priest, Matthew 26, Verse 6 through 12 says this. I need you to listen to it. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster veil of very costly perfume. She poured it on his head as he reclined on the table, but the disciples were indignant when they saw this and said, why the waste? For this perfume might have been sold for a high price of money and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you bother this woman? For she has done a good deed to me. For you will always have the poor, but you will not always have me. For when she poured this perfume on my body, she did it in pre preparation for my burial. I don't know if you just saw what happened there. But um, this lady had a very expensive perfume and she used it and poured it on Jesus. And the disciples were like, why would you do that? Why would you take something of value and give it to Jesus? Now in Matthew 26, it says the disciples were indignant and said, but when John tells the story in John chapter 12, verses four through six, it says Judas stood up and said. So in John, it tells you the specific disciple that Matthew was general about to let you know that Judas was the one who stood up and said, why would you use that expensive perfume on Jesus when you can sell it on the market for 300 denarii? That's John's account. 300 denarii was a year's wage. So a whole year's wage, this lady put on Jesus. And Judas was thinking to himself, I would never take that much value and put it on Jesus. Now all I'm saying is, you may not have his name, but if you ever think to yourself, why would I take my time and use it for Jesus? Why would I take my attention and use it for Jesus? Why would I give Jesus my focus? Why would I give him my marriage? Why would I give him my money? Why would I give him my purpose? Why would I give him my dream? Why would I give anything of value to Jesus? That's a waste. You gotta understand the strong language that Judas is using. He's saying, why in the world would you waste that on him? You can get more for it in the marketplace. Like, I can't get no views and no likes posting stuff about Jesus. If I post stuff about Jesus, ain't nobody gonna follow me for Jesus. 
That's a waste of my time. It's a waste of my platform. It's a waste of my usefulness. It's a waste of my gift. Why in the world would I go to school, go to my job, and give anything of value to Jesus? And so I'm just saying, you may not have his name, but if you think to yourself, this is valuable, so it certainly shouldn't go to him. then you may be sharing in the precursor of your future betrayal. Because here is Judas, he's sitting at the table and he's hot. He's like, this don't make no sense. A whole year's wage, you gonna give your whole 2023 to Jesus? You can't come up like that. And it shows you the mindset of someone who's in the precursor of their betrayal because their expectations are off. He's thinking to himself, if it's valuable, matter of fact, Judas wasn't even thinking to himself, he bold, he just said it. I'm like, bro, Jesus right there. You know what I mean? He's like right here, reclining at the table. You bold with your stuff. Matter of fact, when it comes to Jesus, you don't need to not only say it, you don't even need to think it. You know what I mean? Matthew 9, Mark 2, Luke 5, the, you know, the story of the paralytic, when he heals him and says, your sins have been forgiven, and the scribes and Pharisees thought to themselves, who in the world be forgiven sins under the, other than God alone? This dude is blasphemous. They thought that to themselves, and Jesus, aware of what they were thinking, responded. So if you anywhere around Jesus, you need to be like this. In other words, no matter whether it comes out of your mouth, no matter whether it's visible in your feet, or no matter whether you just sit silently, Jesus knows what's in you. In Matthew 7, the Pharisees said, we did this in your name, we did that in your name, and Jesus said, but I don't know your name. In the book of John, he said, many believed on him, but he would not commit himself to them because he knew what was in him. You may be able to play me, but you cannot play God. He knows the true intentions of a person. He knows where you're at. So this lets me know that just because you have proximity doesn't mean that you have purity. You can have proximity to Jesus. You can be born in the church, raised in the church, get married in the church, die in the church. It can be all of that. But if you're not pure about Jesus, you will share in Judah's destination. Because he's sitting with the king and he's wondering why in the world would I use my life at all for him? And Jesus, Judas here is showing the precursor of betrayal because the mindset, you got to understand, the disciples expected something different. You know what I mean? They expected Jesus to be a regal king. They were expecting Isaiah 9, 7 that says he will rule on the throne of David forevermore that it was gonna be justice and righteousness. They were gonna get out of oppression. They were gonna get paid. They were his closest people. So they were looking at his first coming thinking it was his second coming. They were waiting for him to reign on that throne forevermore. So Judas and the boys were looking for their come up. In Mark chapter 10, 33 and 34, Jesus says, I gotta die and be raised. And James and John, all they could think about is, but can we sit at your right, like on the throne? And he's like, but you can't drink from the cup I drink from. Yeah, yeah. So you want this blessing, but you don't want this suffering. Yeah. 